Hallelujah, Emmanuel Baptist Church. Hallelujah, Emmanuel Baptist Church. I want to say we love everybody out there in Facebook land. Let's know that God still, still have a plan for you. It might not seem like it is day and time, but he still have a plan for you. So just hold on to that and hold on to God and change in hand. Because we know he's worthy. I said he's worthy. How many of y'all know that he's worthy to be praised? Amen. Amen. We're going to get out of the and start this one. So may we pray. Father, we come thanking you for another day's journey, Father. Father, we know that you are an awesome God this morning. We know that you're a God that never make a mistake. So we say thank you right now for your grace. We say thank you right now for your mercy. Father, we always can look to the hills which coming, our health and our strength. So we say we love you right now, Father, because you first loved us. Father, I want to say forgive us of our sins right now, Father. Father, you are an awesome God. Father, we know you're a bridge over troubled waters this morning, Father. We know you'll be shelter in a time of storm. So we say thank you right now, Father. Father, somebody need a word from you right now, Father. Somebody needs you to do it like you've never done it before, Father. So we say we thank you right now, Father. We thank you because you're worthy of all of our praises, Father. As we get into this morning's service, let it be what you want it to be, Father. Not what we want it to be, Father. So we said thank you right now. We said thank you right now. We said thank you right now, Father. Just for waking us up this morning, Father. And starting us on our way this morning, Father. We thank you for the food you put on our table. We thank you for the clothes on our back right now, Father. Father, right now we pray for the sick and the shut-ins, Father. We pray for the bereaved families. Father, continue to lift up the Freeman family right now. Father, we know that there is no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal. So just be one in the midst right now, Father. Father, you are awesome, Father. You are worthy, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you right now, Father. Father, one of these old days, we all going to have a home of desire, Father. And it's going to be ours, Father. All ours, Father. Can't nobody put us out. So we said thank you right now for that insurance, Father. But you are laid upon us. Only if we just follow your word and do your will, Father. So we said thank you, right now, because you are worthy. Father, somebody may be going through something right now, Father. Let's never know what a little talk that you will do. It will work it out. I'm a witness, Father. It will work it out. Father, we're going to try a healer right now, Father. Somebody needs to be healed. Somebody needs to be touched. So do all of that right now, Father. Said we love you right now, Father. We magnify you right now, Father. Because you are worthy, Father. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy, Father. All of our praise. So right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. I said right now, Lord. Somebody needs you to do it. Well, I want to say we love you once again, Father. Father, you are awesome. You are very awesome, Father. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, Father, but you did. You didn't have to start us on our way this morning, but you did. So we said, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, you are good to us, Father. You are good to us, Father. You are good to us. In spite of what's going on in this old world, you are still good to you. So in time like these, Father, we need you to walk with us, Father. We need you to talk with us, Father. Because we know you are a savior for us. Father, we say thank you. We magnify you. We just praise your holy name. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
all thankful to be in the Lord's house one more time in his service, amen, to all of my brothers and sisters who are in Facebook land, to our friends and visitors here in the sanctuary. It is just good to be in the Lord's service one more time. And I am so thankful for the praise team singing, Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus, amen. But somebody needed to hear that this morning. How precious is the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody said there's something about the name of Jesus. It soothes my soul. It heals my wounds. Amen. And something about the name of Jesus. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited because God is really doing amazing things in this season of pandemic. Amen. I don't know about you, but God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. I, I know they talk about the economy is down. I know they talk about unemployment is up. And I, I know they talk about there's not a lot of money for a whole lot of things, but God is still providing for all of our needs. Amen, somebody. He may not be giving you everything you want. Amen. But he's giving you what you need. Amen. And I'm just excited. I'm, I'm thankful this week because on this week we were able to celebrate two birthdays. Sister Dominic celebrated her birthday. Amen. And baby, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Let you know we love you. And not only did Sister Dominic celebrate her birthday, but I also was informed that Sister Black had a birthday on this week as well. And so we are thankful for two of our seasoned saints that God has allowed their golden moments to roll on. Just a little while longer. So I want to tell you happy birthday. I want to tell you we love you. If you missed the opportunity to tell them happy birthday, call them. Wish them happy birthday. Send them a card. Let them know that you're thinking about it. But like my granny in Georgia, uh, put a little something in it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Um, um, if you have your Bibles, and you don't mind, let us turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and uh, as it was stated earlier in the prayer, let us keep the Freeman family lifted in prayer. Amen. 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 They are having a moment. As Sister Jordan would say, if we were in church this morning, it's their turn now. That's all right now. We don't know when it's going to be our turn. That's right. But it's good to know somebody's praying for you. That's Amen. Right. So let's keep that family lifted in prayer and all who are connected. Hebrews chapter 12, very familiar passage of scripture. I will be reading it from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endures the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostilities he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. Just for a few moments this morning with the aid of the Holy Spirit, we'd like to use for a thought, hang in there. Hang in there, hang in there. I, I, I know this morning, my brothers and sisters, that times are tough, and it just, I, I, I want to tell you, though, hang in there. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, this very moment in life, God is working on perfecting you. I, I, I know that it seems like nobody knows the troubles that you see, that you're feeling, or that you are experiencing in this moment. And yes, you are right, but God will not put more on you than you can bear. 
my, 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 my problems, if I could say it like my big mama, ain't your problems. That your, your problems ain't my problems because we all have problems. That, but, 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 but it is how we serve God in the midst of our problems that God and other people are watching. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know that it is tough right now, honey. Employment on the rise. Uh, the pandemic numbers are going up. We don't know if schools will open. Don't know if we will work past tomorrow. Don't know if we go to the grocery store if there will be food on the aisles. But I stop by to tell you, hang in there. Uh -huh. You see, God has signed us all up in a race. It is the great Christian race of life. However, men and women of every generation has confused this race, which from the beginning was intended to be a marathon, but has in some way, uh, and, and, and a marathon one that you have to be in for the long haul, Oh, but somehow it has become a spirit in which only the fastest and the strongest can run. Mm. And just like these Christians, Christians that are being written to in this book of Hebrews, they, they were going through a time of testing and were tempted to give up. And you know it kind of looks like from reading Hebrews that they were in a similar situation that we find ourselves. It is a time of testing and some folk have already Given up. Right. It, it's a time of testing because now your relationships are really put to test. See, it's easy. It's, it's, it's easy living in a house with somebody that, that 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 you're not getting along with, and you're on one shelf and they're on another. But now during this time of social distancing and isolation, you are forced to spend more time and relationships are tested. That, that thing that you could look over, can't look over no more. Things that you would just let run off your back, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't let run off your back. You find yourself a little bit more aggravated, a little bit more tense than Tight because you're cooped up and cooped in. God is testing us. God, God is trying to see where, 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 where your, your Lord is. Out. You know, so many of us. I, I, I know I did. I can't speak for can't speak for nobody else. But 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 but, 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 but I asked the Lord to, 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 to give me a wife. That would love me. But just because you ask for a wife that's going to love you, me, you got to love her back. That's right. Speak, Pastor. And the same way you ask God for that woman to love you, you got to ask God to give you the understanding to help you love and cooperate with her. God is not only testing our, our, our relationship, God is testing our parental skills. I, I, I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just saying what I'm saying, but I work in the school system and I see the product that comes from the homes and we send them out to the school every day and we are sending to the public school systems a damaged product. Simply because we don't want a parent, we want to be friends. Want to hang and suck and dive and kick.
pick it. What I tell you. Then you wonder why they don't mind. Stop by to tell you. You ought to hang in them. Not only did they find themselves being tested, but they found themselves in a situation uh, that they were tempted to give up. If you think about it, my brothers and sisters, we've been going through so much, so much economic uncertainty. They don't know where the next meal may come from. They, we, we, we don't know what is happening. Matter of fact, we woke up this morning to the highest numbers of corona confirmed cases in the United States and there are some places that are reverting back to stage one, phase one, re-shutting down everything. But we have a government that says if you don't open. We're going to withhold money. And there are people who are tempted to give up. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, you ought to hang in there. Because God is working on your behalf. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I do know that God doesn't make any mistakes. I'm a witness that what God can do for others, he can do the same for you. And the reason why the writer says hang in there is he says because none of us have struggled or given our lives in the struggle against sin. You, you, you ought to be able to hang in there. Not, 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 no. Have died for Christ and yet we say it's too hard. But, 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 but the situation that we're going through now are not getting better. Uh -huh. They're getting worse. Uh -huh. So this morning, as we consider the text, it's written to stir us up to keep running and to keep running the Christian race. Yeah, 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 I, I, I know it's tough. People are asking, what are y'all doing? At Emmanuel, have you opened up the church? How are you worshiping? How are things going? But, but we're worshiping online and things are going well because the church is just a building. The church lives in your heart. And if you can't get that across to the people, by now we are already in trouble. Uh -huh. and, 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 and you must understand that, that no matter what this world or Satan throws at us, we must keep running the Christian race of life. Let me tell you a little thing about the race this morning. That, that race is a race for heaven. You, 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 it, it, it's a race for life and both abundant and eternal. It's a race to live with God. And I don't know about you all, but in my living down here, I've had to cry sometime. I've had to catch a little hell. I've been talked about and scandalized. But, but one of these days when my race is over, I'm going to live with God. Won't be no more crying up there. Won't be no more dying. Won't be no more bye bye. It's only gonna be howdy, howdy. We the sweet Sabbath shall have no end. But you have to run this race. It is a race for perfection, the perfect life, a world in which there's 
no more corruption or evil. It is a race for righteousness and justice in this world that we live in complete use of little justice. It is a race for the promised land, the eternal land where we shall worship God forever. It is a race for the new heaven and new earth. And this is the great Christian race. The great goal toward which we are so diligently running. We believe in God and in his great promise of living with him forever if we just hold on. We believe in God's glorious promise of a new heaven and earth that shall be perfectly eternal. We know that if we endure till the end, we shall be escorted into the presence of God. Well, uh, how do we know? And how can we be sure? By the promised seed, even the Lord Jesus. For you see, the promised seed has come and he has died for our sins. But not only did he die for our sins, but he's been raised again for our justification. And our author says that the inspiration of the Christian race is a great cloud of witnesses. And in other words, what the author or writer is doing is putting a brush to a canvas and painting a picture yeah. of a race and the scene is a great coliseum filled with spectators. Uh -huh. You know the race is about to begin. Uh -huh. And I can hear uh, Jesus speaking to all of us saying run us on your mark. Yeah. Get ready. Get set, uh, and Paul gives uh, two quick exhortations uh, when he says, get rid of all excess weight and cling and entanglement uh, and run and run and keep on running uh, until the race is won. Uh, and he says uh, that as you run, uh, I need you to remember uh, that Jesus uh, participated uh, in the race. Uh, he ran uh, the marathon, uh, but why uh, would Jesus run the race? Uh, I'm glad you said, uh, I'm glad you asked uh, why he would run. Uh, the Bible says for the joy uh, of winning the race. Uh, the crown, uh, the heroes uh, from chapter 11. Uh, you remember uh, if you read chapter 11, uh, you will get uh, the hero hall of fame. Don't rush me. Uh, and uh, the hero Hall of Fame uh, in chapter 11. Uh, I need you to know I uh, have participated uh, in the race. Uh, they finish uh, the race for themselves. Uh, but I need you uh, to understand uh, that as they ran, uh, ran their race, uh, they had some ups uh, and some 
and downs, uh, but they kept on uh, running, uh, and therefore uh, the witnesses uh, are an example uh, for us to keep on uh, running. Uh, in other words, uh, that great cloud of witnesses uh, surround us, uh, witnesses who believed uh, that God was able uh, to carry them through, uh, but they didn't just believe, uh, they stood fast for God, uh, stood fast uh, against all kinds of trials. Uh, one thing after another, uh, they declared uh, that if God be for me, uh, he's more uh, than the world against me. Uh, they stood uh, against all kinds of temptations, uh, and you know uh, the world will have you uh, chase the things uh, that glitter and gleam. Uh, but I stop by to tell you, uh, everything uh, that glitters and gleams uh, ain't real. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that they stood uh, against all temptations. Uh, but then uh, there's going to be uh, some opposition uh, in your life. Uh, folk that will go against you, talk about you, run you down. Uh, but they kept on uh, running. Uh, it's something like uh, how we live right now. They'll go to holy rollers, uh, so heavenly minded. Uh, they're no earthly good, uh, but you gotta keep on uh, running the race uh, until the race is over. Well, uh, before I leave you, uh, the three things I need to tell you. Uh, the first thing he says, uh, in this rains, uh, we must lay aside uh, every weight uh, and every sin uh, that'll easily trip us up. Uh, that word lay aside uh, simply means uh, to take off and to remove uh, as in taking off clothes. Uh, we must strip off uh, every weight. Uh, what is a weight? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, a weight is burdens, uh, thoughts of doubt. Uh, when you you don't think uh, that the Lord uh, will bless you uh, for things you've done in your past. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I used to be hard on myself. Uh, I didn't think the Lord uh, could use me for anything. Uh, and every time uh, somebody got a blessing, uh, it seemed like they just passed me by. But I understood uh, by and by uh, that the reason why I couldn't receive what the Lord had for me uh, is because uh, I was entangled in worldly affairs, uh, trying to figure out uh, how the Lord uh, could do this or that uh, and why he wasn't uh, blessing me. Uh, but the Bible I read uh, says that I have to mind uh, my own business. Uh, the Lord can do uh, as the Lord please. Uh, but I need to tell you uh, that the Bible says uh, lay off uh, every weight. Uh, this means uh, an excessive burden uh, or bulk on the body. Uh, it means a reference or, or refers to the things uh, that may be legitimate and innocent in and of themselves, uh, but they gotta go. Uh, for example, uh, seeking entertainment uh, instead of reading God's word uh, and how you're gonna make it now. Uh, you can't go out, uh, you can't do this, uh, and you can't do that, uh, but you ought to be looking uh, for the Lord, uh, laying off uh, those things uh, that trip us up, uh, strip off your sins, uh, which so easily uh, besets us. Uh, it's an imaginary runner uh, who has his fitting loose clothes on, uh, or have you ever uh, seen somebody running uh, in a marathon uh, with baggy clothes on, uh, loose tennis shoes, uh, what the writer is saying, uh, that you gotta get it all tightened up, uh, and you gotta run uh, the race all tightened up. Uh, the question is, uh, how do we run uh, when the 
the world uh, is against us, uh, how do we hang in now? Jesus says, uh, number two, uh, that you ought to look uh, at a role model uh, for the Bible says uh, that Jesus is uh, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, and what did he do? Uh, he endured uh, opposition uh, from sinners. Uh, not only did he endure opposition, uh, the Bible says that he died uh, on the cross. Uh, now can't you see him? Uh, I see the of the world uh, come from royalty, uh, lives in the sinful world. Uh, he's the fire. Uh, Saint and dies on the cross uh, and where is our example? Uh, I'm glad to ask. Uh, he had to run the race uh, to this completion. Uh, the Bible says uh, that now uh, he's on the right hand uh, of the Father. Uh, I thank your Holy Ghost. Uh, come on now y'all uh, and help me close. My big brother would say uh, he's on the right hand uh, of the Father, reading our beautiful case every now and then. When you feel like giving up, I can hear Jesus is saying, Father, my child needs a little power. Aren't you glad that God can give you power from on high? Well, I told you, uh, you ought to hang in now, hang in now, by pulling aside those things that tie you up, uh, hang in there, by looking uh, unto Jesus, uh, the author and finisher of our faith, uh, but as I close, I'm going to tell you uh, how you hang in now, it's thank uh, of the hospital. In verse 4, verse 4 says, Think of all the hostilities he endured from shameful people. And then you have not yet, oh, and then you won't be weary and give up. In other words, if you're going to hang in now, you got to remember how they treated Jesus. You got to remember how they despised Jesus. The Bible I read says that Jesus was a good man. He was a perfect man. I heard he was a good man in a bad situation. He had come down to 42 generations trying to get up. All his humanity, the Bible says, he came to his own, but his own was seen him not, but his many that was seen him to be on, he came to power to become the sons and daughters of God. I need you to remember that Jesus was a perfect man. Jesus
feels it. It doesn't make sense. But God doesn't make mistakes. He's too wise and too small. And all I'm trying to tell you to do is put your trust in God and hang in there. So what? They say you're unemployed. So what? The kids can't might go back to school. So what? God is still in control. And the same God that brought you through sickness, brought us through Jim Crow South, brought us through racism, that we're still fighting. Civil rights movement is the same God that will get us through this. Those of my father's out there, and there may be one.
how you just bless us in awesome and dynamic ways, oh Lord. We realize that we don't deserve it, deserve it. But thank you, Lord. Thank you for your keeping power upon the reality of the matter. Some of us, even including myself, would have lost their minds during this pandemic if it had not been for a God who was on our side, oh Lord. So Lord, we thank you for how you keep us and how you sustain us, oh Lord. Lord, we ask that you would continue to protect us all. Keep us in your care, Lord. Give us the wisdom and understanding to follow the protocols that have been put in place to keep everyone safe. And even for those who are not concerned about their own safety, let them have a heart for other people that they will come into contact with, oh Lord, so that they will be more concerned about them than themselves, oh Lord. And Lord, we just tell you thank you because you are an awesome and amazing God, oh Lord. And Lord, we just want to bless your name on high, Lord. Thank you for all that you're doing for the New Emmanuel Church family, Lord. Thank you for how you are keeping your people connected and committed to your church, oh Lord. And Lord, we realize that it is nothing that I do, oh Lord, but it's all what you are doing. So Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us collectively and individually with the blessings we stand in need of, but not our will, let thy will be done. And then, oh Lord, when all this pandemic and stuff is over, oh Lord, and you say we can gather again in your house, in your name, Lord, we ask that you would show up like a mighty Russian wind, that we can just praise you all day. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we ask that you would keep us in your care until we meet again. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.